this is a demonstration of the revised simplex method using maple as a calculation tool i've taken a simple problem as a tool to demonstrate the steps of this algorithm the maximization problem involving three variables four constraints all constraints are in the form of less than or equal to the standard form of the problem of course we will add the slack variables to the problem so this is a problem that involves s1 s2 s3 and s4 as our basic variables initial starting basic feasible solutions are going to be those variables the steps of the revised simplex method are basically the same as the as the simplex method except that in this case you don't have a tableau and you're only dealing with the matrices so let's start I have used maple commands in here to start the problem using the linear algebra library that is going to allow me to do matrix manipulation the A matrix is defined the elements of the A matrix P1, P2 and P3 are defined the right hand side value the resources are defined and the cost or profit uh, vector has been defined the vector C has been defined based on the given information in the problem now we are going to look at the calculations related to the specific basis in this case our basis includes S1, S2, S3 and S4 the matrix B is formed from the coefficient of these variables the basic feasible solution that we have the basic variables s1 s2 s3 and s4 b is formed from them in the original problem of course s1 s2 s3 and s4 are related to the identity matrix so we will have that identity matrix designated here we are going to have the corresponding objective function values of this basis which of course there are none of them in the objective function so they are all zeros and then we will do the calculation we'll find the B inverse we will find the CBB inverse A minus C we will find CBB inverse these two values are the optimality condition they identify whether the problem is optimal or not in this case I have negative 2 negative 5 negative 3 and 0 0 0 0 which by having the negative values and having a maximization problem in these two uh, vectors I know that the problem is not optimal so picking up the most negative value in here which of course this value is related to x2 this is x1 x2 and x3 columns this is x2 therefore x2 is going to be my entering variable to identify what my leaving variable is I have to calculate the right hand side values that's b inverse b when I do the multiplication I get these values from that multiplication to identify the leaving variable I have to find the min ratio and the min ratio is the ratio of these elements over the pivot column as we know that in in tabular format in this case that value is calculated by B inverse multiplied by P2 because x2 is the entering variable B inverse P2 is calculated and the values are identified we are going to find the ratios 
16 over 4, 12 over 1. Now notice that we are not doing this ratio because it's a negative number and we know any time that it is negative or zero we are not going to do the calculation and the last one is 4 over 2 so these are the ratios for us and the mean ratio in here is 2 which corresponds to this value the last one in here and that is corresponding to S4 therefore X two is going to enter the the base is replacing S4. At this time really we don't need to do the Z calculation but that's how you calculate Z value. The value of course is zero in this case because CV is zero. Now at this point we have two options. One we can do this process in single steps which means do one sheet, one maple sheet for one iteration and then copy the same maple sheet and just change the basic variable set accordingly and follow and get the next one. Or we can keep copying the whole thing at the bottom of the same sheet and go. i rather do them on separate sheets so if there is a mistake I can actually have to just change one sheet as opposed to a long sheet. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to just copy this uh, sheet that I have in, in here dropping these explanation that was uh, created for this process. So I'll start by doing the first one. This is my first worksheet and this in, in this worksheet the same basis has been worked out as you have seen it um, before it is the same worksheet that has been worked out then I go to the next one and this is the one that we need to see this is worksheet number two in this case a p1 P2, P3, B, and C are the same matrices that I had before. However, now my basic variable set, my basis, changes. And X2 enters and replace S4. In this case, I will change that and my XB will be represented as S1, S2, S3, and X. The B accordingly need to be changed so on the last column which was the column of S4 now I will have the column associated with X2. Similarly the CB needs to change the value of S4 in the objective function was 0 the coefficient of S4 now the coefficient is related to X2 which was 5. I will replace that and then I do the basic calculations required as I get to this point and I will look at my two vectors that are representing the optimality conditions for me I notice that there I still have negative number in here and in here everything else is positive and this one is the most negative it's corresponding to X1 so X1 will enter the basis to identify which one is the leaving variable I have to do additional calculation I have to write I have to find the right hand side by multiplying uh, B inverse times little b. The values are calculated here and because x1 is the because x1 was the leaving variable in this case again I'm going to calculate B inverse P1 and the values are here again notice there is a negative value so I'm not going to do the calculation for 
uh, finding the ratio for this element. However, I will calculate the min ratio for 8 over 5, 10 over 9 halves, 16 over 7 halves, and these are the values in here. 8 fifth happen to be the smallest one corresponding to S1. So S1 is going to leave the basis and X1 is going to replace that. As I said, because we are not at the optimal solution, we don't need to do the calculation for Z, but this is the formula and the calculation exists in here as well. So now we are going to go to the worksheet 3 and in this case same worksheet I just copied and I'm just modifying and changing it so it is not a difficult task to do. So A, P1, P2, P3, B and C the same. Now the new basis is going to be X1, S2, S3 and X2. Accordingly I will create my B such that X1 column is now replacing the S1 column that I had before. Similarly, the first element of CB is going to change to represent the coefficient of X1 in the objective function. I will do the calculations and I will end up again with the two vectors that are representing the optimality condition. Again I will notice that there is a negative value in here therefore this corresponding uh, variable to this one is the entering variable and that's x3. Remember again that's x1, x2, x3 and that's the only negative number in these two sets. So x3 is going to enter and to identify the leaving variable again I have to do the calculations for B inverse for B inverse B and for B inverse P3 this time this is a negative number so I will calculate ratios for these corresponding rows in this case the min ratio happened to be 7 over 6 which is corresponding to S2. So based on what we have said X3 is going to enter the basis replacing S2. Again as, as I mentioned we don't need to do any calculation for the Z but if well, we can use the formula to do the calculation. Now we are going to go to the next again the same steps, initial steps However, now I have a new basis. So I form my new basis, which is X1, X3, S3, and X2. I will accordingly change the B matrix to represent X1 coefficients. That's P1. X3 coefficients. That's P3. S3. That's the coefficient of S3 in the original problem and X2 and that is P2 values. Again I will change the CB accordingly 3 which was the coefficient of X3 in the objective function of the original problem is replaced here so that's uh, my new CB. I will do again the calculation and as I get to this point I notice that there is no negative values in here so this solution is the optimal solution. I will calculate the right hand side values and I will calculate the Z values and those are the optimal solutions that I will report for this problem. The optimal solution is written in here and of course I can use Lindo to just double check the solution which is going to be the same thing.
that's it.